What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. So here's the moment you've all been waiting for. The Stalker in Yale Sandy 184 Milspec Tritium Watch Review. Boy, you guys have been bombarding me with questions about this one, and I don't blame you. A lot of people don't really know about this watch, and I've been wearing it a bunch, so it makes sense. Uh, you guys are asking me what the heck is it. Um, so let's go over it. We'll do kind of a top-down review, just your run-of-the-mill time teller review. And uh, yeah, let's talk about why this has not left my wrist for weeks. Let's do it. It's 3.38 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, guys, well, here it is, my Stalker and Yale Sandy 184 military watch. Now, from what I understand, Stalker and Yale was a company that had some military contracts, and they made things like wristwatches and compasses. And you can find a lot of their stuff floating around online. Surprisingly, though, a lot of people don't know much about their little military watches. Now, here, as I've said, is the Sandy 184, but they had a few different variants. They had a Sandy 590 with a quartz movement, and they had the very sought after Sandy 490 Type 1 with a 17 joule ETA 2801 hand wind movement. Now, this is neither of those. This is, again, the 184, and this does have a hand wind movement, but this has a 7 joule most likely Chinese movement. The only information that comes out is that it is an Asian movement. So, um, I'm just assuming that it was Chinese because, come on, China is one of the largest uh, watch movement purveyors in the world. Uh, but don't let that deter you from wearing this watch. Everyone that's owned one that I can find um, just loves this watch. They've had no problems with it, and they're actually not terrible to work on. So from what I understand, there's nothing back here uh, that you can take off. So there's no pressed on case back. There's no screw down case back. Um, there is this little thing here, um, but that's not going to help you remove anything from the back. To work on this watch, you actually need to remove this aluminum bezel. Once you remove that aluminum bezel, you can take off the crystal and actually pull off the dial and movement that way. Uh, and I'm not gonna do that here because I don't need to work on this watch, but if you ever did need to service one, um, you can totally do it. This watch is fully serviceable. Now let's talk about this case a little bit. This is not a PVD coating. This is not a brushed finish. This is not paint. This is actually composite. That's right, this is some type of uh, composite, plasticky, polymer material. And when we get some close-ups here for you, you will see this thing has absorbed some good amount of hits. It's got some scuffs, it's got some dings, it's got some scratches, but this is ticking away, keeping perfect time. Uh, the aluminum bezel, again, has some scuffs here, but it's a military watch, man. This thing has, has some stories to tell. This has, uh, you know, been worn by multiple people, I'm sure, and eventually, you know, it landed in my hands and it's been on my wrist. So I'm glad to be a part of this watch's story and I'm glad to, uh, you know, add on to it. Maybe I'll add some, some nicks and some scratches of my own. But let's go ahead and throw it on the wrist and then we can talk about the dimensions and its overall wearability. Okay, well here it is on my wrist. Now, I have kind of gargantuan, hairy, uh, seven and a half inch wrists. That's the number one complaint I get on this channel is that my wrist is too hairy to be on camera, but whatever guys deal with it, I have a decent amount of testosterone in my system. Um, okay, anyway, 36 millimeters by 39.5 millimeters takes up a decent amount of real estate on the wrist. Again, I have a little bit larger than seven and a half inch wrists, but this wears, in my opinion, exactly how a field watch should, okay? Doesn't encompass the entire wrist. Um, it's kind of flat out of the way, 11.5 millimeters thick. Um, it's robust enough to I don't know, be sturdy, I'll say, but it's not so large and chunky that it's gonna get hung up on, you know, a strap or any gear or any clothing that you might be wearing. Um, it kind of wears exactly like a field watch should. Now, what I will say, this is like freakishly light, okay? Similar to the Boulder Venture Titanium, um, this is an incredibly light watch, of course, because it has an aluminum bezel and a composite case. There's not much to it. You don't even feel a rotor spinning, because again, 
it's not automatic. So um, I would love to compare this to the Quartz variant and the ETA variant. Um, the next on my list is that 490 Type 1 because I want the 17 Joule ETA hand wind. Um, hopefully I can find one, pick one up, and uh, review that as well. But because we have this one, of course, I'm going to show it to you. Um, but yeah, 7 Joule hand wind, most likely Chinese movement. Again, it's got that 39.5 millimeter lug to lug. 36 millimeters on the button. Silky smooth crown, honestly, just a joy to hand wind. What I will say, some nice, decent crown guards, good protection here, no threaded crown though. This watch does not really have a water resistance to speak of. I'm not going to go swimming with this watch, but I don't think, uh, I don't think rain is going to hurt it. And hey, if it was good enough for the military, it's probably good enough for me. I would have loved for this to have a threaded crown, but with a composite case, uh, yeah, most likely not gonna happen. Another thing that I don't like, you can see a scuff here on the crystal. This is a plastic crystal. This is not sapphire, this is not something hyper robust. Uh, guys, these were churned out. These were mass produced practically. These were meant to be used and then if they break, you get another one at the PX or wherever you're going to get this issued to you. And um, yeah, these weren't meant to be anything super special, and that's kind of the appeal to me. I think it's really, really cool. I love that matte black dial, 24 hour markings, but my favorite markings on this dial, can you guess it? The H3 and the radioactive insignia. That's right, this has tritium, guys. This is not loom, it's not radium. H3 means that this is tritium. Um, is it radioactive? Yes, technically. Uh, tritium has a half-life of about 12 and a half years, so this has long been dead. It's not glowing anymore. Um, but it is very cool to see, and one of my favorite things about this watch is that this is a proper military watch with proper radioactive markings. Uh, cool insignias, cool markings don't stop here. Let's go ahead and take this single piece strap off, and I'll show you um, what's going on on the case back. Very, very cool. Uh, let me get my spring bar tool and we'll do it. All right, guys, so the quirks are like just never ending with this watch. Uh, the first thing that was kind of a shock to me, these are not spring bars, okay? It does have drilled lugs, so if I did want to change uh, the strap for some reason, I could do so very easily. I believe this has a 17 millimeter uh, lug width. Let's test that out. Like so, oops, doing it on camera, man. <laughs> Am I right, doing it on camera? Uh, so 16.8 millimeters, so that's about a 17 millimeter lug width. Um, so I could change the straps out if I want because uh, again, drilled lugs make it so much easier, but these aren't spring pins, okay? This is literally just a push pin that's fitted in there. So we're gonna take our spring bar tool, just boom, push that and it is fairly tightly fitted in there. If I can pull it out. You actually can't slide um, the strap out until you push this spring bar out. Or I keep wanting to say spring bar, but it's not a spring bar. Um, let me see if I can do it. The strap is so tightly in there that it's not as easy to just slide out of um, the lugs as like another watch would be. Let's make sure I have it right side up. So let me get you in focus and we can kind of look at all the cool markings here. So you'll notice watch, wrist, general purpose has the military W, type two, stalker in Yale. And then this is the insignia right here, model Sandy 184A, Swiss made case, dispose, radiation waste us that is the coolest part right here radiation waste man that is crazy again not much going on back here you couldn't press that off or anything to get to the movement you got to go up here um i smudged up the case or the crystal right now but let's get some close-up shots we can really appreciate um just how interesting this watch is and kind of how bare bones it is Man, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to field watches, there's nothing not to like about this watch. I mean, it's aging perfectly, patented hands, patented indexes. 
you know, the numerals, still very bold and vibrant. You could still read them quite easily. Asian hand wind movement still ticking away properly. It's just so badass. And uh, yeah, I love this watch. The only things I would change would be perhaps a sapphire crystal, you know, a more robust crystal. And then, um, I don't know, maybe a more confidence in still in water resistance rating, but um, you know, I'm going to keep wearing this. This is still going to be my daily watch. And right now, I don't know if it's just the honeymoon phase, but I enjoy this more than my Hamilton khaki field mechanical. I know that's, I don't know, is that blasphemy? So here's just some more close-ups of that H3 marking again. For those of us looking for tritium watches, they're not super easy to find nowadays and to find a proper uh, authentic military field watch that retains these tritium markings. Um, again, look for these Stalker and Yales. They're not incredibly hard to find. They're not as easy to find as they used to be. And uh, finding that Sandy 490 Type 1 with the ETA might prove to be a little bit difficult. Um, I've seen the prices on these really, really, uh, increase over the years so i'm happy i have one of my own but um don't get it twisted guys i'm going to beat the crap out of this i'm going to continue to beat the crap out of this and uh i'll show you some close-ups of the scuffs this thing already has that's right this watch was not intended to be babied this watch was not intended to be a beauty queen and uh it will live the rest of its life doing what it was supposed to getting beaten up getting dirty and being worn out and about and um Again, guys, I'm not in the military. I'm not going on any hardcore missions. So if it's good enough for the military, it's going to be good enough for when Connie and I go camping. <laughs> so as we zoom in on this radioactive symbol, I'm inevitably gonna get some questions. Um, does the fact that tritium is radioactive freak me out at all? Cause I'm wearing it on my wrist and it's radioactive waste and blah, 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 blah. Um, not really. Tritium has a half-life of about 12 and a half years and this watch being from the 90s, um, yeah, this, this tritium is long gone. It's not encapsulated in any tubes. That's not helping it live longer. Uh, everything's pretty much patinated. It doesn't glow anymore. It's pretty much dead. And uh, this small amount of tritium, even if it was brand new and healthy and glowing, um, it's not enough to really get anyone sick. Uh, I'm not worried about it. I don't think you should be worried about it. I'm convinced that the reason companies changed from tritium to luminescence is that loom simply lasts longer. Um, has a, it, it glows for a much longer period of time. Yes, the benefit of that is it's, it's also not radioactive, um, but it just lasts longer. So you don't have to keep you know, reapplying the tritium every 12 and a half years you can just have a watch with modern luminescence and it'll last a whole lot longer. So I don't think they changed because of health reasons. I think they changed simply um, because of, you know, functional purposes. But yeah, guys, um, all in all, I'm super happy to share this kind of unique military watch with you guys. And I know you kind of see me as the field watch dude. So um, yeah, I'm really, really happy to have this one in my collection now and hopefully I can find some of the other variants for you. But um, yeah, if you have a heads up, let me know and I'll scoop them up. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. And there you have it guys, my little Stalker in Yale Sandy 184 military watch. I get it, it's not the most impressive watch mechanically speaking. There's not a whole lot going on. There's not a whole lot to look at. It's old, it's beat up, it was mass produced. And that's why I love it. It's a cool little piece of US history, it being a military watch. And um, yeah, I get the appeal of this. This is right up my alley. It's something I can throw on the wrist, go for a hike, jump in my Jeep, hit the trail, not really have to worry about it. And um, yeah, that's why it's kind of the perfect everyday watch for me. And I like wearing it on the inside of my wrist. It makes me feel high speed and tactical. But seriously guys, I hope you enjoyed this little review of this little watch and uh, maybe you guys can find one for yourself. Um, maybe I'll have some at the time teller shop in the future, who knows, but um, yeah, really, really cool watch. I love the way this one has aged. It looks its part, right? An old school military watch. Maybe I should do a comparison of this with my 38 millimeter Hamilton khaki field mechanical. Would you like to see that? Leave me that comment in the description. Maybe we'll do that episode next. Well, thank you for stopping by. Thank you to my certified T3 bots, my channel members, you guys rock. If you wanna join the channel, click the join button next to the subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Hit that button too. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of the content we're doing here. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>
Thank you.